Welcome back to Sunless Skies. We are in Albion, and in the last episode, we went around the Home Bureau and the Avid Horizon and all these places in between, which are part of the Quiet Sea that we went to, the Superlipsarians and the Sanctified and the Displeased and all that. So for this episode, um, I think I want to return to what I was kind of doing in the last episode before I got distracted by all the stuff here and I think a bunch of marauders too. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go here and then just go south kind of generally in the direction of London. I know that there's a horror down here and I'm sure other stuff to see along the way. Just gonna keep exploring Albion. There's so much to explore. I love it. By the way, I might sound different. Um, I am still a bit sick so my voice is a bit strained right now, but I, I think the biggest reason I probably sound different is because I have a new audio set up. I'm using an entirely new microphone. Um, by the point that you see this episode, I should have a video up on my channel all about the new audio setup. Probably appeared like a week ago or something. So you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, I have a new microphone. And that means that for the first time ever, I can actually hear myself through the microphone and then it goes back into the headphones so I can actually hear myself and how I sound in the recording. And I gotta say, I like it, but also it's so weird to get used to. I've never been able to hear myself this clearly. It's weird. Maybe this will save my voice, because maybe I won't need to talk quite as loudly to hear myself. Anyway, let's go. I've got one hold space, so let's fill that with one last bit of supplies. And off we go. Every time I come out of one of these ports, I'm scared about the, the butt of the... Uh... Shit, what did I call my ship? The, uh, the Fitzwilliam, right. The Darcy Fitzwilliam. I'm worried about the, the butt of Fitzwilliam <laughs> hitting against the port like it did at London. Fitzwilliam just has a big butt. Whoa, this is spinning, isn't it? Oh, that's really disorienting. Probably a bad idea to actually go towards the horror that's down here, because my terror is 57%. And we got discontent, but uh, I mean, I can use this to lower terror, so. Body going by. Need to make an offering. Okay, let's make an offering. Jettison some supplies. Down to 52%. What is that? Oh, it's the candle wind, isn't it? The scent of rancid meat fills your engine. The candle wind howls. I assume the candle wind is random, just like the peacock wind. Like, I kind of feel like I should follow it. Where does it go? Oh. This is, uh, hmm, a little bit hard to fight. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is not the best place to fight. Let's get out of the candle wind if I can. I didn't mean to jump into its path. Ooh, it almost bashed me in the butt. Start the engine for materials. Yeah, we took a good amount of damage there. You 
You know something that I... Oh, right, we're gonna have this loud loot sound. Hold on. Break into the captain's cabin. Failure. Illegal language. Uh, I think we've seen this description before. Yes, some are in Welsh and Gaelic languages disapproved of by the ministry. Gain a sky story. Uh, something that uh, I'm pretty sure that they changed from Sunless Sea to Sunless Skies is I'm pretty sure every enemy that you defeated in Sunless Sea, you lost a bit of terror, I think? But it's not the case here. You don't lose or gain any terror for killing anybody. When the graveyards were full, London committed the dead to the sky. Another bully's acre. We saw another one right next to London. Of course, not going to break open a coffin. Let's pay your respects. I failed, but that significantly reduced our tear. Oh, we lost whole. What happened? A hush falls as coffins pass by the windows. The silence is broken by an insistent scraping against the hole. One of the coffins has floated too close. A few words are necessary to assuage your crew's unease. You remind all present that were not for the competence and efficiency of all aboard, a cold grave in the sky might have been all your fates. Okay, that happened last time that I went to a bully's acre. A scrive, a scriver appeared. Is it scriver or scrivener? Scrive spinster, I think. Yeah, it appeared. I, I thought I just somehow missed it, but no, it looks like actually examining the bully's acre makes them appear. Do they prey on people who come? Anyway, let's get the hell out of here and try not to hit too many coffins. Oh, they're hitting coffins. Asshole. What the hell is that sound? Okay, I'm not going that direction. Again. Oh, we are up to 66. Jettison some more supplies. Thankfully, I have a lot of them. What is that noise? Oh my god, there's another... There's another, uh, what is it called again? Something ghastly over here. Remember? There was something ghastly up here. Some weird, like, bubble of time displacement. Jesus Christ. Albion is dangerous. Extra dangerous. Oh yeah, I see some weird stuff happening over there. Looks like the Scribe Spinster's looking in that direction, too. Like, it's got bigger problems right now. Oh. Oh yeah, there's, is that an enemy? Okay, no. I'm out of here. Nope. Yeah, let's fight over here. Send out crewmen with axes. Failure. Should get a little bit of coin. 93 sovereign. Yeah, okay, I'm definitely abandoning my abandoning my plan of going through here, because that terror now at 64%. Mm. I don't remember if there's anything I can do with London to reduce my terror, though. I'm, I'm just wondering where I should go to reduce my terror. You do get a terror reduction by finding a new port. Maybe I should do that. 
Um, are there any places that I know of that might be around here? I have no, don't abandon it. There's two descriptions. Clockwork Sun, um, southeast. No, that's all the way over here. Parliament to the west of London. Floating Parliament lies a long way to the west of London. Oh. Oh, I can do that. That's just, like, a bit past the relay. Right? Okay. Um, I'm just gonna go straight this direction. Oh, hey. What's that? That's even easier. I really can't explain how weird it is that I can hear myself through my headphones. It's so weird. Normally if I talked this quiet I wouldn't be able to hear myself at all, but now I can. Oh god, what the fuck is that sound? Albion is full of nasty sounds. Sounds like the fire of a dreadnought. I'm not going to get involved right now. Hold on, am I looking... Am I looking at a planet? Is that a planet beneath us? Holy shit. We really are in the skies, huh? Sometimes it doesn't quite feel like it. Oh, hey. Her enduring majesty, or her... What does HMO stand for? Her enduring majesty, uh, whatever. The genius. Suite, menstrual stamp permit, and a charred stovepipe nameplate. Okay, we're at seventy-one percent tear. Let's dock here. <laughs> Judging by the fact that there's a dreadnought right next to it, I'd say this is some sort of governmental place. The hour of the wolf. Doubts prey on you. This is a path you should have taken. We've seen this before. Once again, endure the lean, cruel hour. Whoa, success. Questions worry at you, chasing away sleep. Later, there's a knock at your door. One of your officers is outside. Comrade, we need you. Duty calls. The doubts must wait. Terror stalks your locomotive. The princess sits in the unlit galley, her teeth white in the dark. Invigorating, isn't it? She whispers. The resting place of Albion's great... and good? Kind of covered up. The great, at least. The repentant devil smiles. What an interesting looking place. It's gorgeous. It looks very different from... Wait, what the fuck? There's a horror right here? What is this place? Tomb of the Prince Consort and of London's other favorite dead. They export panes of stained glass. Yeah, there's a horror right here? Just right outside their doorstep. They could look out the window and see whatever that horror is. Um, anyway. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. 
This place looks so different than this whole area around London where everything's so industrial, but here it's pretty. <clears throat> the most serene mausoleum. Did I have a quest for something here? I feel like I did. The nave. The soaring, sepulchral heart of the most serene mausoleum. Constructed over the cooling embers of Albion's murdered son, the mausoleum was built to house London's most glorious dead. Maybe that's the horror right next to this place. Constructed over the cooling embers of Albion's murdered son. Oh, I want to see it. Kensington Station. Kensington Station is tucked into a side chapel. An elderly footman is lighting candles while waiting to guide visitors into the mausoleum proper. Let's be escorted inside. The footman watches you alight from your engine. He coughs meaningfully. A meaningful coughing? coughing? What? Amongst the dead. Lighting a fresh taper, which he carries in a silver holder, the footman leads you through a narrow arch and down a winding spiral stair. You can hear weeping close by, but the echoes make it hard to discern the source. Soon after, you hear a sharp burst of laughter and music. Occasionally, you can make out the rumble of what the footman confirms to be the London Necropolis Railroad far below. At the very bottom is an oak-paneled door, the footman unlocks the door, bows, and departs. I am very curious about this London Necropolis Railroad. That sounds fascinating. Well, thank you, footman. The footman disappears into the gloom, leaving you alone facing a desk shaped like a baptismal font. A cheery registrar sits in the middle, waiting to greet you. Introduce yourself. There are protocols that must be followed in the mausoleum. An introduction and a warning. She has you fill out a form indicating your profession, age, usage of hours, and to confirm your legal status as alive. The Prince Consort's tomb is exceedingly popular. To prevent congestion, donations are requested. The greater the donation, the longer you'll be allowed to gaze upon the sepulchre. If one is fortunate enough to garner the attention of one of the deathless, one must be respectful and only speak when spoken to. It does not do for the living to linger long among the dead. She files away her form into an excessively large black cabinet. Okay. Can stay longer with more money. Only spoke when spoken to by the deathless. Don't linger. A trumpet blares. Paige is playing the victory lament of her renewed majesty entering Albion to claim her dominion. Visitors to the most serene mausoleum are ushered into the nave, a vast soaring vault above the heart of the mausoleum. Here, guests to the mausoleum may visit the tomb of the prince consort, arrange for the burial of their own dead in the catacombs, or merely enjoy the solemn environs of the empress's monument to her departed love. Let's write a port report to begin with. The most serene mausoleum is, if not the heart of her renewed majesty's domain, then at least its pulmonary valve. The most serene mausoleum endures. The catacombs grow as the necropolis line brings more bodies for burial. Traders bring fresh hours into the mausoleum. Endowments from the empress for the deathless interred in their vaults. Plans are in motion to add a new chapel to the nave, while the deathless petition for a new separate station for the exclusive use of their servants. Death has never been so much in motion. It is funny how much life there is around death. We can locate the convent. Cut convent? Con convent. Look at the convent. This the memorial to the prince consort. That sounds familiar. That's related to... Oh, I think we have a quest to come here to follow up on one of the three people. We need to decide uh, whether we want to let them through at the home bureau. Remember, they have three separate quests that we kind of need to, like, verify and, and check up on their stories in three different places. I think the Prince Consort was one of them. Contemplate the dead son. 99% chance of success. The corpse of Albion's old son is visible from the great rose-colored window. Yes, then this must be the dead son. Just like I mentioned, it must be visible from the window. 
<clears throat> the conquest of heaven. Smoke still rises from the sun's smoldering core. The wound that slew it is clearly visible. A great rent torn in one side. Star stuff, long since cooled to the color of coal, spills into the sky. When her, renewed, uh, when her majesty entered Albion, she slew the sun with an experimental weapon. An unclear bomb. Then she claimed the sun's throne and dominion. Leaving the remains here is a clear message. Not even the suns are above the Empire's reach. I did not know that... It, I, I just assumed the sun was killed by a messenger or something. Or another sun. I didn't know Her Majesty killed it. Experimental weapon, an unclear bomb. If it can kill a sun, then it must be a terrifying thing. Oh, shit, I gained terror. That makes sense. I was hoping I'd lose it, but why would I lose any terror from looking at a dead sun? Let's look at the, the convent. The nun detained in the Avid Horizon was on her way here. Perhaps her sisters might be able to shed some light on her predicament. Oh, then I guess the prince consort isn't the one I was thinking of. It's the, the nun. That's one of the people from the, the home office. The convent is located in a sepulchral annex of the mausoleum, just off the nave. Red candles light the way through the gloomy hallways to the entrance. It is ostensibly for the good of the souls of those sequestered in the mausoleum and patronized by the luminous cardinal. You can't help but note the decor is very martial. A furious prioress is on hand to answer your questions. Yes, we know her. No, we did not ask her to join us, she frowns. And even if we had, which I'm not saying we have, diplomatically, we could never be seen to have officially vouched for her. Do you understand? Ah, I see. Gain five more terror? Shit. This is the memorial to the prince consort. You know, I'm, I'm starting to get the idea that being in a mausoleum isn't going to reduce my terror ever. <laughs> it's not a very cheery place, is it? Let's visit the memorial to the prince consort. The most dearly beloved corpse in all of Albion. Oh, that was the majest their ma her majesty's uh, love, right? The person this whole place is kind of dedicated to? The most serene mausoleum was built to commemorate her renewed majesty's dead love. His tomb is the heart of the mausoleum. The vaults, chapels, mourners, and courtiers, all arteries and capillaries to his memory. To visit the tomb, one must speak to the cheery registrar. Oh, we can do a lot. We can deliver uncanny specimens to get access to the upper gallery. This will reduce a moderate amount of terror. That would be nice. Takes three uncanny specimens, that's fine. Uh, let's do that. The cheery registrar will accept diverse meats. In what? In lieu of monetary donations. It's customary to leave offerings at the tomb, which are cleared away the next day. I don't like the term diverse meats. That reduced a shitload of terror. Holy crap, that's beautiful. It's like 20% or something. The cheery registrar gives you a vibrant smile. Your specimens are placed in a safe under the registrar's desk, which is swiftly locked. The smile never falters. You're led to the chapel where the prince consort is housed. Crowds throng around the tomb, leaning over the sturdy iron railings for a better look. You're directed to a balcony up a small spiral stair. From your elevated position above the crowds, you can make out the serene features of the prince's effigy gazing up from his tomb as though at the stars. You can also make out a little door just behind the tomb, locked and barred. A little door, huh? I would like to see what's behind that door. I have a very good veil skill. I'm partially talking super quiet because I'm amazed that I can actually hear myself when I talk quiet. So interesting I can do that now. Oh, I can keep doing this. I do kind of desperately need lower terror. Even at 40%, there's a lot of terror around here, so let's do it again. 
Oh, it reduces it by 25%. Nice. I can join the reverent crowds at the Prince Consort's tomb. Oh, that will reduce a little terror. And, oh, it only costs three sovereigns. That's nothing. A few sovereigns will buy you a few minutes at the Sepulchre. Yeah, that did, like, 1%. The cherry registrar marks your name in the account book before summoning a footman to guide you to the tomb. The tomb is sunk into a round chapel behind the choir. An effigy of the prince consort rests on top. His long hands are folded in prayer. Four sculpted seraphims... Seraphim? Four sculpted seraphim? What's a seraphim? Ah, a seraphim or seraph, or there's a bunch of other words for it too, is like a, like a celestial heavenly being with wings, I think? How did it describe it? Four sculpted seraphims support him as though about to lift him up in flight. Crowds of visitors in mourning jostle for a better position. A lady in an inconceivable hat shoves her way to the front. You're afforded a brief glimpse of the prince's haunted marble face before you're ushered away. I wonder if the incognito princess would be interested in this place. In fact, I wonder if the lady in an inconceivable hat is the incognito princess. It almost sounds like their hat was so big and ridiculous on purpose to distract from who they were. Because the incognito princess is a princess of, or, or a, a daughter of her renewed majesty, right? I think. Return to the nave. Lingered long enough in the shadow of death. Mm, that just leaves approach the deathless. Her renewed majesty's most highly favored courtiers prefer the upper climbs of the nave away from excitable members of the public. Courting the deathless. The most serene mausoleum houses more than just the prince consort. Under its soaring spires, the empress keeps her most favored courtiers. These lucky few are provided with every luxury they might wish, and a generous stipend of ours. The only condition of this bounty is that they are dead. A legality only. They cannot possess property nor hold political office as a result. They are the deathless. Occasionally they deign to appear to visitors. Oh, I, I thought they were ghosts or something. They're just dead as a legality? Okay. Why? Oh, there's a lot we can't do. What are we missing for this? You need a favor bestowed. Make a donation to upkeep it. What do I need for that? I need ministry approved literature. Okay, well, I guess <laughs> this is literally only one thing we can do right now. Speak with the macabre counselor. She's a former lady of the bedchamber and governess to at least some of her renewed majesty's children. Mortality is a preoccupation of hers. Ooh, 36% chance of success. I failed and gained a shutdown of terror. Found wanting. The counselor advances through the nave like an old and cunning spider trespassing on a rival's web. Her dark eyes dart, and her fingers curl and twitch. She notices your gaze and approaches lazily. She stands for a moment, surveying you curiously, while footmen watch on nervously. Her fingers grasp your arm, feeling the muscle in your bicep, the elasticity of your shoulders. Her grip is adamantine. Then, as suddenly she appeared, she turns away, muttering, Too vital, as she makes her stately departure. I... Are they actually a ghost? The way they're described makes them sound not very human. Describing them like a cunning spider. Her fingers curl and twitch. Feeling muscle muttering too vital. So like we're too alive for them. Okay. Banners bearing crossed keys are being raised all over the mausoleum. The luminous cardinal is staging a miracle play. Oh, can I... Tend. I probably... You must win the favor of the Mausoleum's courtiers. I guess I can't even attempt to speak to that person again. Uh, 
Um, hmm. I think that's it for now. Yeah, I just can't do anything here right now. Um. I guess that means I probably have to do this. Right? Just come back with a Ministry Proof Literature. This will allow you to speak to the currently available member of the Deathless immediately. Yeah, it looks like that's what you kind of have to do as you're in if you fail that, I guess. Doesn't look like there's any other inns. A line on a cheap collection of souls. Until recently, decorating your parlor with bottled souls was a fad in bohemian circles. Now, fashion has moved on, souls are out. <laughs> you unlock this with affiliation bohemia. You have one and all. Oh, I forgot I had that. Well, I do have the room. Uh, let's see what's here. Memorabilia. This is the most cheerless gift shop in all of Albion. <laughs> They do sell commemorative Prince Consort windows at a reasonable price, though. Yeah, this is the only place I've found that exports panes of stained glass. I remember I was so excited when I found some as a bargain somewhere back in the Reach. Never actually needed it for anything after buying it, though, I don't think. Mm, I guess I'll just buy the deal. Yeah, let's just grab all these. And then I have three more spots. Gather some more supplies. And we're off. I want to go in a circle here. Oh, looks like there's two ways in or out. Make that three. Is that a dreadnought? Oh, God. Whoa. Oh, oh, that's a new weapon. That's a whole new thing. It looked like a golden dreadnought or something. I'm not sure if I should even attempt to fight it. Uh, try a little bit. Glorious dreadnought. Shit, 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 shit. That is a weird weapon. Oof. I got some really good shots in on it, but is it even smoking? I don't know. Damn, those shots go far. I don't even think it's smoking. I gotta, like, try to get it to go around a corner and just play this real safe. Ooh, just out of range. Oh, those really hurt. Wow. I'm only gonna try a little bit more before I just run. Alright, this is no. It's it's too powerful. God, those weapons are so dangerous. They have such spread, they're really hard to dodge. How's it smoke? Oh wait, 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 wait. It's actually on fire. It's almost dead. if they have extra good stuff. The glorious dreadnought is defeated, shining radiant wrathful. It drifts in the sky like Ezekiel's chariot. Its golden plating is ruptured, the hymns of its crew silenced. Only the light remains, fading but still burnished and brazen. Gain up to three fuel. 
36% chance of success. Uh, no thanks. Let's loot the hold. Under the sun that never sets, the coffers of the Imperial Treasury fill with the currencies of heaven. The lacquered trinket box. Starlight plays on the silver clasps. Whoa, something... Oh, a couple interesting things happen there. Um, a filigreed mirror has been stored aside. Something moves as you look into its silver depths. The air is briefly filled with the sound of cicadas, the pouring of water, the hiss of a snake. You've lost five of the strength of the sun. New total, 55. Dulled. What is the strength of the sun? Apparently I started with some. 60. And I gained two moments of inspiration. New total, three. That's... I mean, like, I only had one f forever in all of the Reach. I might have had another, and I think I might have used it to buy the... My, uh, Intrepid Cavi. Yeah, so what is this? Strength of the Sun. Some say that the Clockwork Sun was brighter once, but they say it quietly and lie about it afterwards. Huh. Still not quite sure what that means. Like, what does it mean for this to be dulled? Does that mean the Clockwork Sun is... I mean, yeah, it says the Clockwork Sun was brighter once, so I guess the Clockwork Sun is getting dimmer. Stars are dying out, even the fake ones. Anyway, my hole's in really bad condition. Uh, I do want to go see the corpse of the sun, though. Unless there's a bunch of fighting happening there, in which case I'm getting the hell out of there. But let's go check it out. Oh, you can see all that viscera down there. Look at that. Is, is this the sun right here? The broken sun is a warning that nothing may impede the progress of empire, not even the stars. Were these runes beautiful once, or were they always unsettling and eerie? Oh, we can say this. Oh, Vision of the Heavens. Yeah, just sun gore down here. It is just below us. And there is fighting somewhere nearby. So let's stay away from that. Jesus Christ. That's a hell of a sight. Let's go back to London. Uh, let's go east first and then down to London, because I think they're all fighting over here. Free human ruin, ignis and ignobly forgotten. Some souls. I know I have been here before, but only once, and it's really interesting looking, so I'm, I'm not going to cut this. Don't these increase tear? Tale of Terror. Albion's a hell of a place, isn't it? Fields of glass and coffins and, ooh, unsettled dreams. As always, Elizabeth wants company from the Incognito Princess. Partial success, that's new. Overindulgence. On your way to the galley, you round up as many crew and officers as you can and lead them on a midnight raid of the pantry. Brandy is drunk. Murgatroyd's fungal crackers are devoured in bulk. Mmm, fungus. 
But yeah, Albion, a place of glass and coffins and vast graveyards and vast industrial zones and a viscera of a murdered son always in the background of a rather beautiful mausoleum. And that's all within just this spot here and here. I wonder if my aunt is going to be angry at me. They said we may receive their ire. I wonder how we received their ire, given that we didn't take them on board. Well, they don't seem to be here right now. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to take care of business at London, and then adventure some more in Albion. We've barely scratched the surface.